Guys, it's stupid game time. Let's go. Game time. I guess Let's we're go. stupid. This we're is a just, fantastic idea. It's 10:30 at night. Apparently, we're not going to be very excited about stupid game time. Uh, so hashtag nation, Bills Mafia, anyone who is a fan of the NFL, we have a stupid game for you today. And it is the no championship slash Super Bowl draft. So we're going to have a snake draft. The uh, the contestants have are on the board right here in order. Ryan's going to be drafting first, then Paul, then Joe, then I will draft last, but we're going to have a snake draft. We are going to be drafting players that have not, never won a championship or a Super Bowl and try to see which one of us can assemble the greatest team of ringless players. <laughs> How we broke it down was uh, obviously we have a quarterback, two running backs, two wide receivers, a tight end, and a flex. We're going to be doing the defensive episode uh, in a couple weeks, but for right now, it cannot be an active player, uh, and it can't be a player that has won a title. And what was the third condition? I think I remember. Hold on. Retired. Uh, coaching. If they won a uh, – well, If they won one in coaching, it, it doesn't matter. Coach, it doesn't matter. It doesn't yeah. matter if they won one as a coach or an assistant. So that being said, uh, Ryan, you have the first pick of the snake draft. and All, uh, Paul is, <laughs> is waiting to hit oh, yeah. enter on this. Oh, I'm going to hit enter on mine yeah. too. I'm gonna, so yeah, just so everyone knows, so the so the first pick in the draft came up. I got it. Paul goes immediately. This is the easiest pick in the entire draft. No brainer, dead set. I don't think these guys know who I'm going to take. Uh, they both have their picks in the chat and they're going to hit enter as I make the pick. So Ooh. so it's 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 interesting, right? Because you look at um the guys that are on the board. And there's a ton of talent, obviously, on the board. <laughs> Do you go quarterback and take Marino away from Mario? <laughs> Do you play the strategy game and say, you know, it's a snake draft. So who's going to come back to me, right? Like, who do I want in the second round? Uh, but I think ultimately what you do is you take the best physical talent on the board, best player at his position that's on the board. Um, and for me, that's Randy Moss. Yeah, right? I like knew Randy it. Moss has I to be the it. first pick. <laughs> of the draft, the most dominant wide receiver that I've ever watched. I wasn't really, you know, I mean, I watched rice, but let's be honest. It's, you know, that oh. the, the rice that I saw, wasn't the rice that people saw who were cognizant of football before 19. <laughs> right. So like yeah. you got you Randy got the Moss, is, rice. you got the, you got the, the, uh, the, I got, uh, I got the Jerry the, Rice, the, Seattle Seahawks minute. I rice. got the Oakland Raiders, Jerry Rice, right? Yeah. Like that's the Jerry Rice that I had. Yeah. So Randy Moss is, to me, it was between Moss and Calvin Johnson. And because you could argue that Calvin Johnson's best season was better than Randy Moss's best season, but Moss just did it for longer and did it in different ways and did it yeah. with worse quarterback play. So Randy Moss is the pick here. I, I don't think that's anyone's Moss, up for debate on that. Moss was in purgatory for two <laughs> for yeah. Three years. Yeah, he sure was. He sure was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, your your his best quarterback was I mean, Tom Brady, obviously in, in New England, but before that it was what, like Cole Pepper? Yeah. Mm -hmm. So a little a little context, right? We're talking about this in today's NFL too, right? So when we make the picks, when we debate this afterwards, we're talking about in today's NFL, how would these teams fare? Not in how they did in yesteryear, right? So I think that kind of plays into the skill set. And I'm up next. And that's why it's really, really hard for me to look at a player like Ladanian Tomlinson, who I think is the best running back to have ever played the game. Um, and then Calvin Johnson, right? Because mm -hmm. In today's NFL, you know, what do you do? You look at you look at the Chargers right now with Austin Eckler and they still lean on a running back, but that's not really the way the NFL utilizes that position much anymore. I gotta go with Calvin Johnson here. Yeah. You know, like it's the guy Ooh. is just an absolute mammoth, mammoth freak. And on the list of players, there's great wide receivers that have never won a Super Bowl, but Randy Moss, Calvin Johnson, one A, one B after that. You get to a list of great receivers, but just none that were as dominant as them. Yeah. That you is... two shut your mouth. <laughs> That's why receiver isn't even off the board yet. Shut Whoa. your mouth. Whoa. We're talking about a guy who has more receptions than Randy Moss, more yards than Randy Moss, more receptions than Calvin Johnson, more yards than Calvin Johnson. A guy who tore his ACL and in that same season came back Played in the Super Bowl, had nine receptions, 122 yards, and that's with Donovan. I can't throw the ball past people's feet, McNabb, as his quarterback. You guys put some respect 
on the name of Terrell Eldorado <laughs> Owens. Give me T.O. And that is the number one pick, the steal. And I thank you, gentlemen, for that. <laughs> there's, that there's I, no love, I love Heel Joe. I love WWE boy. Heel Joe. We, I love have to, we have to bottle this up. This is I why people watch Joe when, we, when Joe him. does the live streams. When Joe does the live, this is what we get. <laughs> You put some respect on that man's name. Oh my God! Am I going to have emphasis on the El Dorado? I like that. Yeah, I love the I love the El Dorado. <laughs> Always go. You guys literally left me with nobody to throw to. <laughs> <laughs> you know, the, the run on wide receivers have gone. Plus the three names that are on the board. Oh my God! How can you argue any of those three guys? Going in the picks that they did first, first pick, second pick, and third pick. It is, it is the easiest pick I have ever had to make in my entire adult yep. life. And it's a snake draft, so it's going back to Joe. But I am going to go back to back since you guys have already cornered the wide receiver market. Mm-hmm. I am going to. <laughs> yeah, right, there, there you go, Dan Marino. <laughs> I'm going yeah. to take the greatest quarterback who is it still in discussions, mind you. As one of the greatest quarterbacks of all time, even though he has zero titles, I'm going to go with Dan Marino, 17 years. The man was a beast. And I am going to go with a guy who is way ahead of his time, heck of a running back. And it's going to sound very, very crazy that I'm going to take him over the, uh, the, the who I think is the greatest running back of all time. I'm going to take LaDainian Tomlinson as my running back. Yeah, those are good picks. Those are good picks. And let's just be honest. Mario is is uh, biased to Marino because Mario and Marino are only one letter apart. So that's, that's the real connection. Also, a peek connection. behind the curtain. So Paul and Mario both threw in the chat who they thought my first pick was going to be. And yeah. Mario put LT. So Mario feels like he's getting the steal of the draft right now. Yeah, so I really right feel LT that I'm back. In this he didn't want those wide receivers anyway. <laughs> yeah, I didn't oh. want, yeah. <laughs> Marino, if you would have put Marino with any one of those three, it gets, it gets draft is over. Like, it's yeah, a it's four a minute over. episode. <laughs> yeah, you get now you give him a running back that you can throw 150 balls to. <laughs> he won't well, do it. But... With Dan Marino, he'd throw it through <laughs> LT. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting. I'm giving Marino the running back he always wanted his entire career. <laughs> oh my god! All right, Joe, you are up, my friend. So this to me is where where the draft starts getting interesting. And, and you know, and and as we talked about a little bit earlier, it all is about who who can we get later in the draft? Who's going to survive? Both Paul and Ryan twice now uh, in this snake draft. So and <laughs> I and not. what I, I saw the run wide receivers. Obviously, you go there. What's the next run going to be? Mario already picked two picks. But let's be honest, he doesn't know what he's talking about. So... <laughs> I'm done. You guys can finish out the episode. Ooh. So we have to figure out what's next. I personally think that in today's NFL, yeah, the, the top wide receiver is important. Uh, but after that, you want to pair him with a good running back. So I am going to go running back here. Uh, but you want to make sure they fit they fit well together. This is my team. Who's going to fit well? with Terrell Owens. I think that, um, and a lot of people, obviously with the debate about best run back of all time goes back and forth. To me, uh, you know, it's about who have I seen play? Never saw Eric Dickerson play, never saw Earl Campbell play. So it's hard for me to go there. However, I did see Barry Sanders play. And uh, there's there's very few times where I thought to myself, this guy is not the best running, or best, yeah, best running back in the NFL. So for that reason, I'm going to take Barry Sanders with my second pick. Not a bad pick. Not yeah. a bad pick at all. T.O. and Barry on that roster. Oh, mm-hmm. See, now I there's one running back that's still, I think, top level to me. And again, it's probably not a name that people are going to say, oh, my God, Paul, why do you think he's top three running back when you look at the list of, of players who never won a Super Bowl? But I'm willing to wait at that position because I, I didn't get my shot at 1A at uh at Randy I know Moss. I know you're taking you bastard. Oh, oh you do? <laughs> I do. I think I know. Okay. So yep. with that being said, I'm gonna take who I think is the best tight end who have ever played the game of football. Yep. Ooh. And that is Tony Gonzalez. Mm-hmm. You give me yep. Calvin Johnson and Tony Gonzalez and I will see you I will see you in January. <laughs> I got to <laughs> see you in January. Oh my yeah, God. and I mean Paul Paul was right on. So I, I got I got a little worried 
when Joe started spouting off about what's the next run, because to Mm -hmm. me, there's two names in that tight end position. Mm -hmm. So if you're not one of the first two to take a tight end, you're, you're going to be hurting, especially guys that are going to be successful in this NFL, right? Like, wait, is this, is this a legitimate, if you're not first, you're last. Yes. Yes. (laughs) If if you're not first, you're trotting out Jason Witt, right. At, at tight end. So how dare you um, spit on Jason Witt? I'm going to right away capitalize and take it who I think is, the second best I will concede to Paul that Gonzalez is the best one on the board to me. Antonio Gates is number two at tight end. So I'm going to take him off the board real quick. Um, And then here's, here's kind of like where the team building comes into play. Right. So I have the option of the second quarterback off the board. If I want to take the second quarterback um, or I can strike uh, and take another great wide receiver. Cause I think there's, a couple left that I would be super happy to have. Um, And then there's obviously running backs as well. So I'm going to go a little off board here. I'm not off board, but I'm going to go a little bit of a curveball in terms of um, who I'm going to take. I am going to double up Randy Moss and pair him with another dominant wide receiver and I'm going to take Julio Jones off the board here. Um, Julio Jones, a guy who, you know, can play in today's NFL because he just Mm -hmm. retired from this today's NFL, Uh, Mm -hmm. another physical freak. Uh, I'm going to trot out a receiving core of Randy Moss, Julio Jones, Antonio Gates. Um, I may wind up with Ryan Fitzpatrick at quarterback for all I care, but those (laughs) three guys are going to cause a lot of people, a lot of problems defensively Julio Jones off the board. You could have anybody here quarterback that team. And there's yeah, a I mean, Mario, you ready to come out of retirement from Buff State, man? Let's go, <laughs> some balls around, man. Let's go spin it, kid. I could throw for 4,000 with those three guys. <laughs> I just want to get to a point where we back Joe into a corner and he has to draft Donovan McNabb. That's all I want to do now. <laughs> That's my sole goal. Um, so, again, you know, t- I think Ryan brings up a great point when you start looking at team building. And I think some positions are deeper than others. Right. Like quarterback position to me is pretty thin. Right. There's some really great quarterbacks who have never won a Super Bowl. But I'll be honest with you, the list isn't very long. Right. Yeah. Um, so after Marino, it's not a wonderful list. Right. <laughs> um, and I think a lot of the guys that have similar value. So I'm, I'm kind of with Ryan here. Uh, instead of drafting my, you know, my one running back, I, I'm, I'm willing to wait there. And I just don't see a world where a player like uh, like because, again, I'm going to pair up a possession receiver here. I don't see a world where a player like Tim Brown or Andre Johnson just aren't effective in today's NFL. Right. Mm-hmm. Um, so. I, uh, this really hurts. This hurts because <laughs> I love Tim Brown. But you start Andre rationalizing Johnson, it and then you talk yourself out of what you I know. Were I yeah. love Tim Brown, but Andre Johnson to me was a player that just was in the worst possible situation during his NFL career and voluntarily stayed in a bad situation for a really long time. I loved Andre Johnson. Ah, to hell with it. I'm taking Tim Brown. Never mind. Never mind. <laughs> Give me Tim Brown. Give me Tim Brown. To hell with it. Tim Brown. I love when I am right, gentlemen. <laughs> and I was right in my gamble. I personally looked at wide receivers that's on sport and the screen next pick and talk about possession receivers. That's what I need. I need a possession receiver. I have T.O. I have the guy that's going to go long. I have the guy that's going to burn you deep. And I have a guy in T.O. who could also play a slot. So I need that possession receiver, a guy that's consistent, a guy that will not stop, a guy that's a workhorse. And I'm going to get that in, this, in the guy who is second all time in receptions. Second all time. You can't get much better than that. The Don't you freaking do it. Survey. Don't you freaking do it. I'm taking Larry Fitzgerald. You're such a jerk. <laughs> when I cause to call Fitz a possession receiver isn't fair to the beginning of Fitz's career. Let's be honest. Yes. Right? Like right. it's it's not fair to the beginning of Fitz's career. No. That is no, it is not fair at all. So, but second all time receptions. It, the, yeah, I think people forget how dominant Larry Fitzgerald was. Mm-hmm. Oh my as a god, receiver, absolutely, for sure, absolutely, absolutely, absolutely. Was. He had all the physical tools of all these guys that we that were drafted ahead of him. He just was was never in a great offense. Just slash watch what, that playoff run back. the Cardinals made in '09. Like, just watch Fitzgerald during that run. It was unbelievable. He took them to the Super Bowl. It was nuts. Mm-hmm. I am in so much trouble right now. 
<laughs> Mario's got no wide receivers. <laughs> I have nobody. And the list is wind up with Brandon Marshall. All day. Check down. Check down. <laughs> I'm gonna wind up with Brandon Marshall and Wes Welker. Uh, and <laughs> I'm gonna go. <clears throat> Son of a biscuit. Damn, you guys really backed me in a corner here. But I got two picks back to back. You guys are gonna be going running backs heavy, you know, coming back, uh coming back down and quarterback. So I gotta try to figure out who I'm going to take here. I gotta find somebody for Dan go Danny Boy to throw to. First and foremost. Yeah, that's a good pick. I'm gonna go with Chris Carter. Yeah. All he does is catch touchdowns. He'll catch a ton of them from Marino. Hopefully I'll have that. And you know what? I'm going to go with a surprise pick here for some of you guys. It's going to be another wide receiver, but a guy who you guys want to talk about today's game. How does it translate to today's game? And a guy who literally reinvented a position for today's game and kind of going into the new NFL. I'm going to take Welker. I'm going to take Welker at receiver. I know there's a bunch of other positions I could have taken there with some of the things going on, but you know, if I got Chris Carter and I got Wes Welker, you know, I think I'm going to be okay because I got Danny boy slinging the rock. So if you took freaking, there's six wide receivers, look at Moss Jones, Brown, Johnson, Fitzgerald, and Owen. Where am I going after that? Like, you know, there's literally- a minimum weight requirement for your drafted team, right? Mario. <laughs> Minimum weight requirement. <laughs> Minimum weight requirement. I don't know what that is. I don't know what you speak of. But <laughs> it's back on to Joe. Oh, I can't wait to hear how wrong we are. And Joe is going to tell us how wrong we are. About what? No, no. You, you guys have done such a great job this whole draft. I tell you what. <laughs> <That's amazing. laughs> so, so now I look at my board and I say, what, what's left? Right. I got my one star running back. I'm not too concerned about my number two running back at this point. So they got that flex position team. as well. I, freaking hate I can my go. Team. What's that? <laughs> I said, I hate my team. <laughs> <laughs> this is but me. Every Dan fantasy Marino. draft. <laughs> you got Dan Marino. So you have Dan. Yeah, you. And, and I think that comes with Jim Carrey and a dolphin. So good. <laughs> <laughs> So who are you taking, Finkel or Einhorn? <laughs> Einhorn Finkel. I kissed a man. <laughs> I could go with my third wide receiver, but again, you look at the third, uh, the wide receiver position is still available, <clears throat> and I do see a lot of the the the, the you know, same tier of uh, wide receivers. So you know, you don't want to hurry up there. You look at the tight end position. You know, I have another pick before Mario, who is the only guy who does, other than myself, who doesn't have a tight end. So I can wait on that. I think the the, the smart play for me right now is to go quarterback, um, but it's tough. It's really tough for me. I, I really like uh, a guy who we never saw play live, obviously, but I have watched film of him. I love Frank Tarkenton. He was really a guy who was a pioneer. He was the first guy to kind of just sling the ball downfield. Um, I like him a lot, but when you talk about playing in today's game, there's a guy on this list, uh, Philip Rivers, who, who we know could play in today's game. I think Philip Rivers has led the number one offense multiple occasions when he played for the Chargers. I think Philip Rivers is the second best quarterback on this board. Uh, so that's why I'm going to go Philip Rivers as my quarterback. Now back to Paul, Tim Brown, Tony Gonzalez, Calvin Johnson. Is he going to go with somebody to spell them and run the rock? Or is he going to go for his quarterback at this moment? Uh, I can't afford to let Ryan get a quarterback here, right? (laughs) That's the way that I'm looking at this. Um, And, you know, the Bills fan in me says Jim Kelly could compete compete in today's NFL. And first off, I want to point out no Bills players except T.O., he doesn't count. Uh, no Bills players have been drafted, right? No. Uh, and you still have you still have a lot of perennial Bills players on the list. You still have Thurman Thomas, OJ, Andre on the list. Um, Pete Metzelar's not on the list. Um, but uh, Wait, and, he's and not, Jim Kelly. He's not on your list. He's not, <laughs> okay, that's fair. <laughs> But Jim Kelly, you know, staring down the barrel. I think Kelly was a player who could still compete in today's NFL. But then you look at Warren Moon, and you're like, ooh. That's a tough one, right? Um, listen, uh, it, no offense to Andre Reed, but Warren Moon and Chris Carter couldn't get it done. I, I can't take Warren Moon here, right? Uh, and I really like Moon as a player. I'm going to take Jim Kelly because Ooh. give it to me. 
I, I think he could throw the ball 45 times in a game and, uh, and you'd be very, very successful in today's NFL. Give me Jim Kelly. So look at, look at Paul. This, trying is to all get game, fans. this is all gamesmanship, right? Cause this is, I don't have to worry about quarterback now, right? I can let That's quarterback true. go. I can take yeah. quarterback with my last pick. Um, full disclosure. Warren moon was probably my guy. When we talk about guys who can play in today's NFL, he can run, he can throw uh, the monsters that I have throwing him or him to throw to um, Warren moon's going to be my quarterback uh, spoiler alert, but I'm, he's not going to be my, my pick. Right? Like, <laughs> I can let him slide and I can take better value um, at this point in the draft. So the one position that I have not addressed yet, other than my quarterback that I will be taking in, in one Warren moon uh, is running back. So the question here is, do I go um, running back, running back, or uh, do I go running back and then maybe snipe one of the two last hall of fame wide receivers that are left on the board um that are worth writing home about because let's be honest right like steve largent and charlie joiner like we're not going to draft them in in this draft so uh, there's a couple of wide receivers that are left on this board former bills both uh that might be worth taking i do have a flex position i do have a need for a possession receiver um on my team i've got a couple of guys that are you know field stretchers go do everything uh, but i don't really have a guy that can kind of work the slot work the middle of the field um as as well as maybe uh an andre reed say would look pretty good on my roster but all that being said right i digress uh i'm actually going to go first running back for me off the board i'm gonna go adrian peterson uh workhorse you talk about do it all uh seven time all pro uh eight mvp you know one of the top rushers in the NFL underrated uh, receiver out of the backfield. Didn't get a ton of opportunities, but he did a lot with them averaging eight yards or reception. Um, so better than a lot of people I think give him credit for uh, in the receiving game. And then, you know what? I am actually going to double back. I'm not super worried. I've got a long list of running backs here that I'd be happy with coming back to me. Um, and I don't really have that many guys that are ahead of me uh, that need to take, or that are going to take running back. So uh, I'm actually going to, th- force uh, a couple of guys here behind me to make decisions at the flex position. I'm going to take Andre Reed off the board as well. So add a possession receiver uh, to my growing stable of receivers uh, that Warren moon will love throwing the football to when he eventually gets drafted to my team. I think he may have thrown a few passes to read in a, in a pro bowl or two. <laughs> Probably a couple. Yeah. But you already have a, a you know, chemistry there. So that's good. There you go. <laughs> We'll pretend that's a thing in this in this draft. <laughs> in this alternate universe. All right, Paul, you're up, buddy. Well, as the only owner of uh no running backs, I think it's pretty apparent which direction I'm going with this pick, right? <laughs> uh and again, you you have to kind of peel back the layers of what makes an effective running back in today's NFL because again, when a lot of these guys played, it was a different NFL. So the skill Don't sets you that it. you highlight aren't exactly the same. So You know, to me, the best remaining running back on the board uh, is not one. I think he is a player that gets really underrated. So for me, because I know the comment section is going to determine who the ultimate winner of this is. Right. And I took Jim Kelly. So you guys all already lost. This is the Bill's (laughs) channel. You guys are all idiots. Okay. Um, But there is no way in the world that I could look at myself in the mirror and say that Gale Sayers isn't the best player on this board. So I got to take Gale Sayers. Um, it's not the not the running back that I want to draft right now, but it's the player that you, when you're staring you in the face, you got to take Gale Sayers. Is, is I love that. Pick. Yeah. Man, okay. like, he's not the player I need recently. He's not the player I want, but the player <laughs> yeah. I need right now. Yeah, that's it. That's <laughs> it. I had, I had a post-it note that said, Gale Sayers, no matter what, in my pocket. <laughs> I just felt like we, between Ryan and Paul, we sat through a Bean McDermott press conference. I got no information out of either one of them. Just the drunken ramblings of two madmen doing a fantasy draft at 11 o'clock at night on a Sunday. You're not kidding. You're not lying. Just because Paul says it doesn't matter doesn't make it true. Let's remember, I drafted the first Buffalo Bill player off the board with my first pick in Terrell Owens. It might have only been one year, 
but he played for the Buffalo Bills. So so if you're a true Bills fan watching this, you're obviously going to pick my team over anyone else's anyway. Jim Kelly, please. All right, so where am I going? That's the next question. And and I honestly don't know. I have no idea. I, I, I was listening to Paul and Ryan give us no information whatsoever, and I completely forgot that I still need draft players. So Derek Mason is still on the board. He Derek is still on the board. But so it was is Jackie so Smith. McNabb. So, you know, where do I go from here? Um, I look at that flex position, and I really do want to get a wide receiver um, to, to kind of close out what I got because if you look at the the board of wide receivers left, there are very few. Um, and so I want to make sure that I get the guy that I want here. Not a fan of this guy from, from watching him as far as attitude. Um, currently an analyst for NFL Network. I, he does a terrible job. Um, but I, I'm going to go with wide receiver. You know, a lot of guys coming out of the draft, a lot of people said he was too small. He wouldn't fit. And he worked his ass off to make sure that he was one of the better uh, wide receivers in the NFL, and I think he'd still be able to get it done. Give me Steve Smith Jr. Uh, in my flex position. That's a good pick. He's so underrated too. Mm-hmm. Like Steve Smith, you look at his statistics; they're eye popping. You know what I mean for a guy that really didn't have a quarterback for most of his career. I mean, if, unless you count Jake Delhomme, and I don't think anybody here is counting Jake Delhomme. If there's any Chris Winky slander, we're gonna have a problem. <laughs> I mean, he came into the league at my current age, so I don't know. (laughs) I can't wait to draft Warren Moon and put him in my flex. Just to piss Ryan off. (laughs) You know, when you guys were talking about 1A, 1B with wide receivers, you know, there there's a couple guys and what I thought I thought Joe was gonna be going here with this when he was talking about a guy that's underrated and a guy that gets kind of overlooked. Um, so my first selection, I'm going to fill in that second running back slot. I'm going to take Curtis Martin. Damn you. Damn you. I think (laughs) I knew I wouldn't get him past you. I know LT LT and Curtis Martin. You probably could have gotten Gail Sayers past him though. I got to say, yeah, Uh, (laughs) maybe I might've taken Sayers, but I, you know what, Martin, you know, one of those guys, you know, you got to be able to catch the ball in the new NFL. You got to be able to do different things from the wide receiver position or from the running back position. Both LT and Curtis Martin could flex out in that slot position and do some damage to you. Um, so that's what uh, that's what I'm going to take. And I literally have to take. <laughs> I think I, oh, God, this is not good. None of this is good in <laughs> my flex. It. I'm going to go outside the box here in my flex. Oh, there you go. I'm putting Thurman oh, Thomas in my go. flex. Oh. I know it's very, you know, unlike the new NFL to have three running backs on your team, but with the amount of talent that I have, all three of these guys can catch the ball out of the backfield. And I got Carter and Welker there. I'm not throwing the ball more than seven yards down the field, apparently. <laughs> so that's going to be my offense. <laughs> So coming you back to the great, you, Joe. you got one of the greatest quarterbacks in NFL history, and everybody's running a four yard out. <laughs> hey, you're There's never gonna be a couple get the ball. in there. You're never getting the ball. I'm holding it the entire quarter. <laughs> 15 play drives, <laughs> eight minute just clock eaters. Paul takes 18 inches of daylight. That's all I need. I'm surprised <laughs> you didn't take Frank Gorsey for somebody to just stumble into the end zone at the end. <laughs> I literally took Thurman just to piss Paul off because I'm looking at it going out. I'm listen. I'll get. I'm gonna. Mario's a historian. He's he's too thin at running back. I was like, I I don't think I'll get Sayers by him. I just don't think I'm gonna. But I'll get I'll get Curtis Martin by him, or I'll get Thurman by him. I'll get one of them. No, he was there. Like Sayers was there for me. Suck. I would love to have Sayers on this team, but you know he was taken. He was taken. All right, so. So this, as Ryan talked about earlier, when it was quarterback, now it's game and chip. Uh, the two people ahead of me both already picked their tight end, and I pick again before Mario does. So I know that whoever I want a tight end, who, whoever is left available, I can get him when it comes back around to me. So I have to look at my running back position. So we look at the board, you know, and you look at some of the players still available. You got Earl Campbell, Eric Dixon, Edron James, Frank Gore, some of the good ones. But... In my estimation, a guy we talk about guys that get overlooked. I think people forget that there's only one one running back in NFL history to rush for over 2,000 yards in a 14 game season, and this is a guy who uh, you know didn't play for one of the best teams. I mean, you know, back then it was run OJ left, run OJ right, run OJ middle, punt, 
Like that's what the Bills <laughs> did uh, back then. Would his game translate well to today's NFL? I personally don't think so, uh, only because he'd be in jail. But you know, other than <laughs> that, I... <laughs> uh, so give me OJ Simpson as my running back. Did you just make I'll... an argument against him and then pick him? <laughs> Yeah, T.O. and O.J. are going to get along great. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing team says chemistry, team chemistry. <laughs> O.J., T.O., and Steve Smith. I'm sure they'll all go. Good God. <laughs> Good what is God. happening tonight? Philip Rivers is going to have to hire all 13 of his children to be bodyguards. <laughs> oh, my goodness. All right, running back is left for me. Uh... And a flex. Again, Ryan needs one. Well, Ryan needs a running back, right? Oh, okay. I know he's got to take quarterback. So, like, I, I can't. I got to play into this one, right? I could go flex, but there's no reason to. Uh, I'm I'm going to take running back here. Um, Unless I play Warren Moon at running back. Yeah, that's true. <laughs> run the, sure run the oop the oop. You sure could. <laughs> um, Give me a break. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, I'm going to take running back here. Um, the... Again, looking at today's NFL, um, I gotta go with Chris Johnson. Hey guys, like you if just, you had you can't if, bottle up speed like that. Wait, just just for hashtag nation. If you had looking at today's NFL on your bingo square, coming I out know, of right? Out. Yeah, Frank. <laughs> yeah, but give me give me Chris Johnson. You just can't find speed like that, you know. No. And uh, I'll, I'll take that. All day, he Sayers catch, and Johnson in the back. You could catch the ball. Oh, That's Lord. what I mean, right? Like those guys could fly, just straight fly. Tim um, Brown, Deion, tra- Deion Sanders wasn't on the list, list, so I couldn't. Pick, I couldn't pick him. <laughs> <laughs> Tim Brown is like a track guy, and he's probably your slowest. Re- I know. Like, I, know. What the- <laughs> I know. Oh man, that's phenomenal! All, all right. right, Ryan. What do you what do you got left? You were talking all that shit about Frank Gore, but guess who's still on the board for you, Ryan? <laughs> well, I already put Moon in for his quarterback because that's who we said he was taking. So yeah, well, that'll yeah, be my, that'll take be him my last the turn. pick. Yeah. That'll be my last pick. Yeah, so I mean, I need wide. I need a running back, right? So there's there's two guys that are really intriguing to me um, at this pick, and and two guys that I felt like would be there in in the last rounds. Um, yeah. Edger and James, who I really like. Um, and then another guy who's fairly underrated. I mean, actually, I was worried a little bit that Joe was going to draft him when he started spouting off and then somehow took a left turn into OJ world. Um, <laughs> and that's that, that's Steven Jackson. Um, Steven mm-hmm. Jackson at, at 6'3", 240, um, more career. Uh, he only had 11 fewer catches in his career than Thurman. Um, he had, wow. you know, more rushing yards than Ricky Uh you know, obviously rushing yards weren't there in terms of like when you compare him to like Eric Dickerson or Earl Campbell. But again, we're talking about guys that can play in today's NFL, right? Steven Jackson's built that way. I take the opportunity to pair him with Adrian Peterson. Like that's really intriguing. Oh. Um, had I not taken Andre Reed as my flex in the last round, I may have had to lean a little bit towards Eds just because he was probably a better receiving back than Jackson is. Uh, but considering my wide receiver core paired with a- Antonio Gates uh, as my my running, or my, I'm sorry, my tight end, I have zero issue taking two absolute bruisers in the backfield of Adrian <laughs> Peterson. Um, and then it was down to really, is it Ricky Williams or Steven Jackson? Ricky Williams didn't do it for as long as Steven Jackson did it. I think by all accounts, Ricky may be a better running back, um, but I think Jackson's longevity and overall size uh, gives him the nod, the nod here. So I'm going to go Steven Jackson. Uh, at, at my second running back position. Yeah, Jackson was was surprisingly fast for somebody his size, right? He could, yeah, he could really, really run. Yeah, I mean, and if and if you use like if you use like stat head and you throw those guys all up together and do the player comparisons, like Jackson stacks up against any of these guys that are highlighted in yellow um, on the, the the board that Mario sent out, which indicates Hall of Famers, right? Like Jackson, yeah. Did it for for lo- a little bit shorter of a time, only 160 games played compared to like Thurman was 180, you know, Adrian Peterson was 180. Um, but he's there, right? I mean, he, you know, mm-hmm. 11,000 yards rushing, 3,700 yards receiving. Like he had, you know, 88 or 78 total touchdowns. Like Steven Jackson was that dude. And his size and speed combination in today's NFL, that translates perfectly. So I'll take Jackson and Peterson and, Drafting from the one spot, I should, but I love my team. 
I absolutely am in, in, am in love with my team. And I have a bill on it, a pretty good one. So I think I get the, the nod ahead of Paul, who took nah. Nah. went for the sympathy vote and took Jim. <laughs> hey, instead listen, of Paul. taking the talent in Moon. <laughs> Hey, politics is politics, man. There you and, go, man. And, you know, it kind of leads me to my last pick, right? Because one person that was, because we, you know, making up a list like this is challenging um, because it's not like you can just Google what players have never won a Super Bowl, right? Like you can get like the highlight list, but it's really hard to get like a detailed list. And looking at flex, I wanted to go with a player that injuries were the reason that they weren't the elite level player, right? They weren't the Hall of Fame player. And, to me, uh, you know, a player like Arian Foster, had he been able to stay healthy for eight seasons, was just a world beater at the running back position. But again, as we talked about, as good as as Arian Foster is, I wouldn't take Arian Foster over Gale Sayers or Chris Johnson. Right. And that's what the flex positions for. But you know what? I would take Sterling Sharp over just about everybody. And that was the player that I wanted in my flex spot. I was hoping he snuck by because to me, Sterling Sharp was amongst the best receivers I'd ever seen play. And it was at a point in technology where, where when a player got injured, depending on the severity of the injury, their career was over. And that's unfortunately what kind of robs Sterling Sharp of everything that he had coming. And I think like when you go back and you look at Shannon Sharp's induction speech in the NFL, he goes, I'm in the Hall of Fame and I'm not even the best player in my family. That, that was yep. true. Sterling Sharp was a incredible wide receiver, and he gets forgotten about. Uh, I, I'm thrilled to have him as my flex. 65 touchdowns in seven seasons. Yeah. And he he like yeah. led the league in receiving like four times or something like that. It, yeah. His stats were mine. Like if he played another three years, he's in the hall. Absolutely. If he plays another three yeah. years in the hall. Absolutely. I love Sterling Sharp. I love that pick too, you sniper. Okay. <laughs> uh, okay. So, Joe. Tight end, oh, buddy. What sissy you slapping each other for tight ends. Let's go. <laughs> I think Ozzie Newsom's the best player on that board. Of oh, you're going to gift Mario Jason with. I am absolutely going to gift Mario gonna, Jason You're Wynn. just going to gift wrap it to him? Mm-hmm. Oof. Man, I, I don't like know that about pick, that. Though, Joe. I like that pick, though, Joe. Really? I like yeah, I like mm-hmm. it. You take Newsom over Witten, too? Uh, I think I'd have to. Just for. Yeah. Wow. Just for. I don't know. There's just a couple of, re- I, I mean, I, I love Newsom is the, it, when you talk about guys that change the game, maybe, maybe he doesn't transfer over in today's NFL so much as Witten would, but you talk about guys who changed and reinvented the position. You got to talk about, there's two guys, there's Newsom and Winslow. Those right. two guys reinvented the position. Right. And another guy that reinvented the position where Paul will remember this, he actually got into contract negotiations when he was tagged and he was upset because of how much he lined up out wide versus when he lined up in as a tight end. Mm -hmm. I will take Jimmy Graham as my tight end and leave Jason Witten on the bench there. He wasn't on the list though, guys, but he is a a tight end who has never won a Super Bowl. Jimmy Graham never won one. He never won. He got he got to New Orleans in 2010. They won it in 2009. So I will wow. take Jimmy Graham, the 6'7", 260 pound freak, and spread him out wide. And I will I will tell everyone that Mario is the one that's out the list. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. <laughs> and I also said you could put any names you want no. on there. And then Ryan said, "Oh, I'll keep my names to myself." <laughs> <laughs> so I'm like, "Okay, he could do that." And I knew you guys were going to go with Gates and Gonzalez and Witten. And I was like, I'll, "I'll save the tight end for last. I'll save it for last because I know no yeah. one's going to have this guy." Mm-hmm. That's like that's what makes your team salvageable. I'm just going to be <laughs> going to be honest. What makes your team Graham never even played in a Super Bowl. That's no, wild. no. And you and you think, right, when you think about the Saints, like you always thought the Saints were really competitive, especially coming out of the NFC. Right. But they just could never they just never get get the job done. And then no. he goes to Seattle. You're like, well, Seattle was hot at yeah. that time. Right. It did, nope. Nope. Surprisingly never, enough, well, he had he had 713 catches and 85 touchdowns in his career and he played 12 years. Mm-hmm. So. Um, and went out with the nickname Jimmy Grandpa because he stuck around too long. He did. He did. He did. He did a Vander Holyfield himself, didn't he? <laughs> he didn't stick he kept around. talking about guys that were reinventing the. I thought you were going to take Jason Witten and just like the guy that just like ran three yards downfield and turned around. 
No, he would have been no. perfect for your team, Mario. For, for this, <laughs> he sure would have been. Really going to be running. He sure would have been. Who drafts Paul's... their deep threat at tight end? <laughs> the Bills, apparently. Bill stretcher. <laughs> <laughs> Don't Kincaid anyone. <laughs> So, uh, hashtag Nation Bills Mafia and anyone else who's watching this. This is our it's no soup, no championship, no Super Bowl winning uh, teams that we've drafted in our snake draft. If you want, leave a comment down below on who you think has the best team, and uh, you want to play this with your friends on a you know Friday night. You know, go ahead, have some fun. But uh, I love the fact that I put El Dorado. I was able to fit it, El Dorado Owens, and <laughs> that's what makes that so much better. It was Joe's heel turn. I was so proud of him for that. <laughs> The only thing missing was him calling us jabronis. <laughs> Shut your mouth. <laughs> Shut your mouth when I'm talking to you. <laughs> so make, make sure you guys hit up all the links, TikTok, Twitter, Instagram, and Facebook. Make sure before you leave, hit that uh, like and subscribe button. Check out our teams. We're out of here, guys.